Right, I'd like to welcome um, to Interpol World Television, Tinku Asheria, from, who's the founder of uh, a company called Videonetics. Now, the subject we're going to talk about is absolutely fascinating. I think it's I about image compression. And um, Tinku is one of the leading lights globally on video compression. Um, Tinku, you are um, got first known for JPEG 2000 standard, which I think you invented, did you not? I was part of the committee. JPEG 2000 is a uh, scalable image compression standard from the International Standard Organization. I was in that committee and, and this was the first scalable came out of the you know, uh, DCT based techniques and that was the technique which was used for the internet based communication. So that was the intention and scalable and uh, different features were there. So I wrote the book that is the first book on that subject which talks about the algorithms, VLSI chip, architecture and which is used across the globe, all the universities and industry, they use that as a reference and I'm very happy about that. But we've now seen it moving into H.264 and H.265 and uh, I think we're seeing people describe H.265+. Plus. Yes. Com compression is getting better and better and better. Is, is there anything else that we can do in the compression market or... Uh, you know, with the more and more compression will be required because the resolution of the video is, is going higher and higher. You know, starting from 1 megapixel, 2 megapixel, now people are talking about 10 megapixel, 20 megapixel image, video. So per second, if we need to get high frame rate, we have to have the high compression. At the same time, we cannot compromise with the fidelity or, or the visual quality. So that's why, yes, the innovation in this space will continue and today people are talking about H.265 recently you know with Hegvision Videonetics we have we have mapped H.265 plus into Videonetics VMS we are the first one in the world H.265 plus compliant and in future more innovation is happening we are working on it and I'm sure you will know about it uh, much higher compression. Now, one of the things that Videonetics is doing is, is using AI and deep learning to, to help in, is it just in compression or is no. it with, with, with other areas? Videonetics is involved, you know, after I worked on the first webcam in Intel 1996, I realized that video is going to be another data type, okay, and today it is the reality. So, there are isolated companies, silos, VMS companies, analytics companies, face recognition companies, they are all working in silos. So I launched this company 2008 with the goal, I want to create a platform agnostic video computing platform so that none of them will work in silos. So everything is integrated in a unified platform and, and, and platform agnostic in the sense, agnostic to any operating system. It is not dependent on any particular operating system. As a result, it has the less cyber security threat. So Videonetics is the pioneer and the first company to come up with this unified video computing platform by which intelligent VMS, on top of that there is an AI and deep learning framework and that deep learning framework, our own design, deep learning framework. So lots of data can be analyzed, video data can be analyzed. For example, last January, we launched first in the world driving detection of some driver with cell phone okay first in the world we have we have launched you know driver without wearing you know helmet okay in real life and we are doing this using these artificial based techniques and the power with normal security camera all the intelligence in the software so there is a talk people say we need specialized camera that is not true with chip Normal surveillance camera, if you have the powerful software and all these techniques are involved, you can do it. And we have proven that. So you keep inventing new things. Uh, you keep winning awards for innovation and growth. How are you doing this? How are you staying that much ahead of the competition that's out there? You know, it's the passion. You know, innovation is the passion. When I started this company, the, the goal was to come up with innovative technology, not a me-too technology like five other people are doing. So, and I build a, I'm very proud of my team, a very high caliber team I have developed. They are all think alike, 
innovative way, out of the box thinking. As a result, not a lot of new technologies we have developed. And you will be surprised to hear very soon, we will be launching a technology, if some vehicle is polluting on the road, we will detect that also. So uh, that, that's one technology you predicted. What other technologies do you predict and what ones do you think will be there for the good? And are there any technologies that you think are going to come in the future that are not going to be for the good, they're going to be for the bad? <laughs> you know, technology, good or bad, depends upon how you use it, right? How you deploy it. For example, nuclear technology. Is it good or bad? As a scientist, you cannot answer how you know people will be using the technology for the for the humanity or against the humanity that will define good or bad but as far as the in our domain video you know ai and dl and this video analytics and all this traffic management system and all these things you are talking about to bring the order into the society so that is the, and and in india our technology has been deployed in 136 cities 80 plus airports and in a India, Prime Minister of India took the smart city initiative and we are the pioneer in the smart city domain. So we control almost 70% of the market share in India. So and if you go, you know, India was infamous for the you know, traffic, chaos, chaotic traffic conditions. Many, many cities who have adopted our technology, traffic is in order. As a result, people's life, people's time, everything is, you know, being saved. So I, I consider that is in a positive way, good way. Now, you know, if people apply it for a negative purpose, so that is not the technologist responsibility, you know, how the policy will be, you know, framed. So yes, uh, mainly when we scientists, we technology are developing the technology, our goal is how to bring the good to the society. Um, but we're seeing a massive growth in endpoints as we get more and more IP enabled devices. We're seeing a greater and greater impact of AI, um, where is this going to stop? You know, th surely there's a balance between good and bad. Uh, are the good guys winning? Are the bad guys winning? What tips from a scientist perspective would you give to the, the, the massive police, security, law enforcement audience that we've got watching us? <laughs> Let me tell you, you know, the innovation will continue. It will not stop. What is AI? What was AI 25 years ago? It is not the same AI today. And what AI you are seeing today, 25 years ago, 25 years later, the character of the AI will completely change. So innovation will continue because human mind cannot stop. If innovation stops, that will be the end of the society, right? Now, good or bad? Again, the question is, innovation will continue. How you are going to apply it, that will determine good or bad. But I am a very hopeful guy and I am sure we will see much more powerful technology coming in future. And somebody asked me the question, so will AI take over the criminals, bad guys? My answer to them, better not. Because if we stop innovating and criminals will take over, the criminals will start innovating. Rather criminals start innovating, you know, criminals always police chase behind the criminals. If criminal starts chasing police, that is not the good for the society. As a result, innovation will continue and it will be good for the society. Well, on a good for the society um, note, that's a good place to um, stop. Uh, and I wish to thank you very much indeed for coming and talking to us on Interpol World. Tinku, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you, please. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you.